Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Brandon again. You're watching the second half works week of 11 weeks out from the New England Revolution. Now, this is a squat day, and the docket had pause squats for six sets of two at 340, some flat shoe squats, some stiff legged deadlifts, back snaps, rounding of peace, as well as some incline dumbbell rows. Now, the way that this program has been set up is very similar to the cube in the aspect where it integrates three different types of days of training that being speed, reps, and strength. Now for this particular day, it is actually considered a speed day. So you might be asking yourself, why the hell are you doing paused work on a speed day? And that's really because from my own experience, speed work and squats just don't really go well for me. I find that I actually get a lot of lower back pain from doing them too fast. And I'm very slow and methodical when it comes to squatting in both my form and just how I perform better at this. So what I've started to do instead because the actual percentage is very similar to what I'd use on a speed day, is I've been doing pause squats. So I'll go into the hole and pause for a few seconds depending on how I feel. Sometimes the hole feels really good, sometimes I just wanna get in and get out. But then I'll try to explode up out of the hole. So you see the bar kind of get a little bit of momentum at the top. It's not that Ernie or Eric Lillibridge level where the bar is literally flying off their traps, but I'll take it at this point. So six sets of two at 340. For this particular work, again, because the percentage is not very high, I'm also choosing to do beltless work. So I will try to implement beltless training into my protocols. Now, obviously, as I get into higher percentages, I will strap on a belt. Uh, I'll do this the same thing with deadlifts and other lifts as well, working up to heavier sets. But if we're around 60%, or even less, I won't use a belt just because I figure my core could get the added work. So here I'm just showing you a couple of different angles. I'm also using those SBD wrist wraps that I got in the other day. Again, these are the flexible versions. They have told me they're sending me the stiff versions as well. I'm thinking I'll probably do a review on these in the next couple of days, so expect that video very soon. I will also try to compare them a little bit to the gangster wraps because as you guys probably know, those are my preferred wraps. Unless we're talking sandwiches, in which case, that's a whole different discussion. So after those six sets of two, I decided to go ahead and do some flat shoe squats just because ankle mobility has been an issue for me. And I know those Olympic shoes really kind of mask that a little bit. They let me get away with a lot of things. I still want to work on this. And I figured doing these would allow me to also get some work in on my ankles as well as to me, this is just a different kind of squat. I feel differently as far as my quads and my hamstrings go. So I ended up doing a five by three, working the weight up. Here you see the first set at 315. And I also decided to show you the last working set that I did that was at 375. Now another interesting thing about this particular day is I didn't do any mobility warm-up beforehand and I've been really staying away from that for the most part actually but what I did instead was I did a couple of sets of deadlifts up to about 405 as a warm-up just because one of the things I noticed on my deadlift days which I mentioned last video is that I really feel good afterwards however it didn't really translate to this day I'm not sure if that's because it's my second squat day in about two or three days or I just didn't go heavy enough. Anyways, after that, I did three sets of eight of some stiff-legged deadlifts. And I know there's some backgrounding here. I have no issue with it. Number one, because the weight is fairly light. And number two, for stiff-legged deadlifts, I usually find that you will have some backgrounding on here. I'm really just trying to focus on getting a good stretch in my hamstrings. And this weight isn't anything overly heavy that's gonna snap my shit up, so to say. From there, we did four sets of 12 with 85-pound dumbbells of just these inclined dumbbell rows. So again, trying to get some of that pulling movement in and towards the fourth set of these, I was toast. But again, if you wanna find out more detailed information on any of these workouts, follow me in Photocracy. It's always linked in the description box below. And that wraps up that particular day. Which brings us on to the next day, which means it's time for my second bench day of the week. So right now I'm benching on Tuesdays and Fridays. And my goal here is to do what I did on Tuesday in a similar way. But if I did pauses on Tuesday, I'm gonna prioritize touch and go. So touch and go, three by three to start. But then as I got into it, I decided to go ahead and implement some pause work as assistance exercises. Uh, my first working set here for touch and go was 315 and these moved fairly well, which I was pretty happy with. And one of the reasons I decided to work in more pause work on this particular day and do a lot of benching overall is because I had Dan Mackler come down to the gym to train with me. Now Dan has his own channel, which will be linked in the description box below. You guys might be familiar with him from watching Nick Wright or Bob from Olympus Irons channel as he's been in a lot of their videos. He's also rocking the Omar Isof Rascal Apparel Abdominal Snowman shirt. So big props to them as well. So again, find his channel linked in the description box below. So for my next working set, I decided to go for 320. So just a little bit more weight, bumping it up. I don't think I've ever done this for three reps before, regardless of touch and go or pause. So of course we go touch and go because that's much easier. But I got these all up. 
and I'm proud of myself. I've been having a little bit of issues of getting it up on a Friday, and that's what day this was filmed. And that's also way too much personal information for you, so we'll move on. So here's Dan's main work. He had a couple of sets of 245 paused, six reps per set. I've also been trying to convince him to go to the meet with me on March 28th and 29th. He's thinking about doing it, but he also coaches a couple of bikini competitors. It's a lot better than I could say for myself, who are competing on that weekend. So he's not sure he's going to have time to do both, dedicate to them as well as be able to come into the meet as strong as he'd like. So my next set is 325. Again, this would be a PR potentially for me going for three. I don't think I've ever even attempted this before, so I can't say that it's been something I've been chasing. I just never occurred to me to try it before, I guess. And all three reps went up pretty well. Again, considering that I just benched fairly heavy for myself on Tuesday. So this increased bench frequency and volume has been helping me slowly get up my poverty bench. Here you see Dan's next set. Try to get a couple of different angles here. He's really good form. And one of the things with Dan is he's been getting very strong in all of his lists. If you've been following his progress for any length of time, you'd know this as well. Again, his channel hasn't been opening for that long, but he's really making all kinds of gains, which I'm happy for, but at the same time, I'm very jealous and wouldn't mind if he got injured and had to slow down on the gain train a little bit. Just kidding, Dan. Or am I? From there, we moved on to another three by three, in this case, pause reps for me. This is my top set, so I went 275, 285, 295, and again, these moved very well, so I'm happy with how my bench has been progressing. Time to get out of that poverty range and really put some work into it. Now, after we did that, I moved on to wide grip pause benches, so three sets of six at 245. And for me particularly, as I've mentioned before, for all my assistance work, all these variations, I'm not trying to stray too much from the main lift just because I feel like this is going to translate better into my actual bench than going extremely wide in this case or extremely narrow in close grip benches. Dan also did some wide grip work as well. And if you guys haven't done wide grip benches or paused like we're doing here, for example, I really find that they're a great assistance exercise. Just be careful though, probably can't use as much weight and go easy on your shoulders only because with such a wide grip, it's harder to tuck your elbows and use your lats. So you're really putting a lot of stress on your front delts. Now I did finally do some overhead press, three sets of 150 for six reps each. And again, this is following more of the rep template um, particular for this day, which my overhead press day is always going to mimic whatever I did for my deadlift day before. Of course, not in terms of weight, because that would be tremendously awesome, but more in terms of what I'm doing. So if I have a rep deadlift day, it means I'm also gonna have a rep day on the overhead press. Now, Dan finished with some just inclined dumbbell presses, and overall, it was a great time that we had. Gains had by all, PR set by me, even if they are poverty, as mentioned before. Make sure to check out Dan's channel. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching, and stay big. Quinoa chips, sea salt flavor. Getting some Quest chip flashbacks here.